I work for Intellect Design Arena. I work and run the Americas region for them. The uh, company is designed to create software for banks. Uh, this particular division, IG, IGTB, is focusing on transaction banking software. But we have other lines of the company that focus on risk and treasury management, insurance, as well as consumer banking. So we're going to concentrate today on transactions. Actually, uh, is this what you're showcasing this year at Cybers? That's correct. So this is primarily a bankers conference focusing on payments and risk and all the other high, high issues in the market that we have to deal with. Um, our particular theme this year, in addition to payments, is contextual banking. So not so much just the payment, but why are we making the payment? Really, what is the end user or the person who's actually initiating the payment? Uh, what's their goal? What needs to be done in terms of uh, tracking that payment? Providing much more data to the end user, but also providing the data that makes the payment more uh, valuable in terms of not just making it, but what's the purpose of it. So making it global and implementing uh, your um, uh, system into the new developing markets, what are the main challenges you are actually facing? Well, I think in the, it's, the developing markets is actually a very good spot for us because our software is a robust end-to-end -end suite of products. So for people that are just trying to get into the payment space, if you go into the emerging markets, it's, it's something that we can do, uh, provide them kind of a, a a, a suite of products that allows them to enter the market kind of like payments in a box. We can provide payments, risk, reporting, everything in, in combined. When you go into the much more mature markets, and especially the tier one banks, they have historically built things themselves, they have software already in place, so our company will bolt on or, or add on to their systems as needed. So the, the nice thing about our company is the full suite of products allows us to provide all or components, whatever they might need. So, uh, would you give us an example, um, a, like practical example, when uh, you applied your software to one of the banks in developing countries and what difference did you make? Uh, well, specifically, I'm not familiar specifically with the deal because I didn't, I didn't uh, do it, but Moshrek Bank is one that we provided them uh, software into the payment space, uh, which is again a full suite of opportunities for them to onboard their clients much faster, effect their payments much quicker, and and their their improvement or their percentage improvement. I don't know the number specifically, but I think it's between 30 to 40 percent improvement in terms of how they're onboarding clients and how they're affecting payments. So that's a Middle East client. Uh, I'm focusing on the Americas, which is a region that we've done some business with the global banks. So we provide uh, liquidity solutions for JP Morgan globally, HSBC globally, Northern Trust, uh, and we do a, a number of servicing for the Canadian banks as well. But we're really working diligently to penetrate the Tier 2 space in addition to Tier 1. So what actually does a small bank from a third world need to have in order to actually to um, uh, imply your software and to start using it? How long does the process take? Well, that, that question varies depending on the bank. So some companies or some banks have a strong IT department, but if you go into the emerging market space, most of them don't. So we would provide a lot of not only the intellectual property, but the, but the, uh, the capabilities around implementing it for them, right? So from a professional services space, we would help implement for them. So depending on the bank's internal IT team, it could go faster or slower. Uh, we've we've imp implemented full suites of, of uh, servicing in, in 12 to 18 months for some people, which is quite fast. Uh, we we implemented a payments hub for one of the major Canadian banks, at least the first phase of it, in about 18 months, from from zero to Hero. to go live. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, what do you do in order to actually manage the risks uh, for transactions? Because I mean, this is like an advanced world we're in, mm -hmm. and the more um, advanced is the software, the more advanced is the threat to the software. Sure. Well, obviously, our software is as we develop it, we have lots of checks and balances in place to make sure that it's, we'll say, bulletproof, right, from from hackers and things of that nature. But when you look about Look, look at the risks that exist in the environment. Now, depending on the region, regulatory pressure within the U.S. and Can uh, 
Canada is a pretty safe market, but the U.S. and the U.K. and Europe have big pressure on them from regulators. So most of our software is designed to to take advantage of solving those problems for them. We have specific risk pillars that focus on uh, whether it be onboarding risk or you know, looking at payment risk, all the things that need to be put in place to protect not only the bank but protect their end users. Can we maybe look a little bit in, into statistics with uh, IGTB? It's a very competitive space. I would say that uh, our win ratio is pretty high. We. Again, we're a global company, so we're working in all regions, so we have a, a strong uh, presence. the Americas. Well, the, again, going back to my earlier point, the Americas is a space that where we've done some very good things with, with the major banks. We're really pushing aggressively now into the Tier 2, even the Tier 3 space as necessary, because payments is something that everybody wants to be in, right? So. Uh, it's, it's a solid business for the banks, it's, it's a high margin business and obviously it's a repetitive type business, right? I mean, processing is, I always say to people, everybody could process a payment, right? Our job is to get banks in the game, but we're also trying to get them to differentiate themselves. So some of the things that we're developing, like the contextual banking piece, is a differentiator. It's intuitive software, it gives them some... Uh, data management and intuitive knowledge to help them make decisions. This is stuff that you, that you use in your personal life like on an iPhone, right? Your iPhone is very intuitive. It tells you where to go and how to do certain things. Our software on the payment side is starting to do the same. So we're very excited about it. Um, but again, from, from a market perspective, the America is, is right on the cusp of really starting to hit its stride. We've made our mark obviously in Asia, being a company that was headquartered in India. Uh, so we have a very strong presence in the APAC region as well as the Middle East. Uh, Europe and the Americas are a fast follower right behind them. How accessible your software is? Some companies has it, you know, on Amazon that you can actually purchase it and install yourself. How is it user friendly? Well, it's, it's, it's user friendly from the standpoint that our software is very, I said earlier, modular. Uh, we also have many apps that are easily downloadable. We have a technology called uh, Canvas uh, technology, which is a CBX layer, allows us to um, support all the major product lines that we have. So again, my earlier comment is we could bolt on to existing systems or we can do the whole, uh, the whole match for you. Uh, it is, it's one of those things that allows us to interact with any IT department. Uh, it allows us to give them the flexibility. So uh, people have told us we're a very easy company to, to do business with. If you had three words to describe the uniqueness of IGTV software, what would it be? Well, I would say it's robust, it's flexible, mm -hmm. and it's powerful.